Hey guys, I'm Dave Chesson here of Kindlepreneur.com and today we're gonna go into the good, the bad, and the ugly book titles that are out there and some of the things you can do to ensure that you don't make those mistakes when you're picking your book title for your book. Stay tuned. Now, if your book is in this list, I apologize, but then again, maybe you wanna pull up a chair, grab a cup of coffee, and check out why your book made the list. But with that though, before we get into it, I wanna jump into some of the things that make a good book title and some of the things that don't. So, we're gonna start by the four elements that every author should think about when creating their book title, give some examples of books that employ that perfectly, and then we're gonna move into the bad and the ugly. So, let's get started. So when creating your book title, one of the number one things you should add is intrigue. This is something that gets somebody to stop scrolling and immediately check your title and start thinking to themselves, hmm, this sounds pretty good. But the way to build intrigue actually comes from different methods, like the contrary to perception method. In this case, a book will take something that's very common that we're all used to seeing and switch it up a little, like, trust me, I'm lying. A partial history of lost causes. The liar, the hmm, and the wardrobe. Sorry, the only time I curse is when I step on the Lego, but you get my drift. The next are the just outright shocking, like new ways to kill your mother. This book is full of spiders. Yeah, I'm not sure that title actually makes anybody want to pick that up. Would you eat your cat? The sequel to the ever popular Korean book, Would You Eat Your Dog? And my favorite, I still miss my man, but my aim is getting better. Another way to build intrigue is when you use something familiar, like old poetry, common phrases, etc. Like A Brave New World, For Whom the Bell Tolls, The Devil Wears Prada. Number two, genre worthiness. As we all know, there are many genres who have a certain feel to their titles. Case in point, don't title your book Epic Intergalactic War Space Marines and have it be about Captain John all alone on a ship with his mistress, Stacy. Don't cross, cross the streams, okay? Don't cross the streams. Try to imagine all life as you know it stopping instantaneously and every molecule in your body exploding at the speed of light. Right, that's bad. Okay. Exactly. Here are a couple of books that do it really well, where just hearing the title, you'll know exactly which genre it fits in and just feels right. Do androids dream of electric sheep? And for those of you who don't know, that's actually the book title for the really awesome movie Blade Runner. Tell the wolves I'm home. Silence of the Lambs. Gone with the Wind, which is way better than the author's original title, which was the ho-hum, tomorrow's another day. The next is number three, context, context, context. A lot of authors make the mistake of naming their book, not realizing that it actually has another contextual meaning. These are gonna be really fun when we get to the pure ugly titles. Another aspect of context is if your book is being sold in other countries. Sometimes the meaning of one word has a completely different meaning just across the ocean. For example, when the book Harry Potter and the Philosopher's Stone came out, the marketers looked at it and said, you know, Americans aren't gonna take to this whole Philosopher's Stone. That doesn't sound cool. I guess everything's gotta sound cool in America or something. I don't know. So instead they created the really cool title, because that's how we roll, I guess, of Harry Potter and the Sorcerer's Stone. I guess you can't argue with success. And moving on to my number one favorite, number four, discoverability. In the quest to create this really creative title, some authors miss the mark and go beyond and create a very broad title that really has no meaning. It neither tells us what it's about, nor does it cover the subject matter inside. And this is really important when you're working with things like Amazon and Amazon Search Engine. If Amazon can't figure out what your book is about, you're never gonna show up. The only way you will show up is if somebody types in your exact title and then searches for your book. And that can be deadly for some of us. Now, you don't have to put your keywords or your subject matter inside the title. If you don't, that's what a subtitle is for. But try to keep that in mind as you go writing your book, especially if it's nonfiction. All right, here comes the fun part. The pure, bad, and ugly book titles out there. The manly art of knitting. Talk about missing your genre. The wonderful children's classic, Counting the Days to the Apocalypse. And no, they're not talking about how many days until the US elections. Does God ever speak through cats? Is that a thing, people? I mean, like, really? Are, 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 are there people, like, at home saying to themselves, oh my God, I think, 
I think God's talking through my cat. And the not so obvious, how to avoid big ships. Thank you, Captain. I really hope that you can write out of experience on this one. One of my favorites. Everything I know about women, I learn from a tractor. Context, people. Context. And the wonderful, innocent, mommy drinks because you're bad. I really think that this is a Family Guy episode, you know, one of those jokes they make, but it turns out this actually got published. And there you have it. The Kindlepreneurs, the good, the bad, and the ugly book titles out there. So try to avoid some of these title minds and make sure that your book has something that's both marketable and creative. And a combination of all four of the things that we talked about can make a very powerful book to increase your sales and to get you out there for more customers and fans. Well, I hope you enjoyed this episode. And if you know of any book titles out there that I should totally bring up next, go ahead and pop them in the comments below. We'll make sure to cover them in all their glory. I'm Dave Chesson signing off and hoping that you keep calm and right on. Cheers.